that you are going to be telling your uh, your son's story. Uh, Alicia's with us, and thanks for coming down and saying hi. Hi, guys. Thank you for having me today. And you have twins, and we always get a little background information before we do interviews. And we just have to say we love the names Trip and Rowdy. And you were telling me down down off the stage there's the meaning behind their names, which is cool. Yeah. Uh, actually, my husband and I tried for about four years to have children. Um, we're blessed with twin boys, and uh, we had a little bit of time to think about the names. So they are named after Olympic swimmers for their first names, and their middle names are after literary geniuses because you can't be a really great athlete and not have some good brains. Oh, I nice. think that's fantastic. I think it is, too. So... Talk a little bit about Trip and and what landed him here at the hospital. Yeah, Trip's story actually is very long. Uh, we found out at 20 weeks expecting that there was some kind of abnormality with his kidneys, but we weren't really sure the extent, just how extensive it was until right. after he was born. Um, he went straight to the NICU at our local hospital at birth and was brought to University of Iowa Children's Hospital um, four days later to where... Um, you know, we were just in told that his kidneys at some point would probably shut down. Um, being naive, being overwhelmed, being emotional, we had absolutely no idea what that meant. Um, so it was a very emotional night for us until after we had a chance to meet with um, the incredible team here in pediatric nephrology, which is the kidney docs. Um, and they said, you know, yep, his kidneys are probably going to shut down, but we have plan A, plan B, and plan C. Um, and you've got a fight in front of you. And my husband and I have never been so grateful for the opportunity to have a battle. How, after the doctors told you what you had laying in front of you and your husband and, and, and you were alone, mm -hmm. what did you talk about? How did that, how would that go? It was a rather difficult conversation because with twins, we didn't get to be alone. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know... I, don't, I think we were so emotional and overcome by it, we didn't even know what to say, right? How do you digest that information? The only thing we could look at each other and say is we're thankful for the doctor's opinion and for their incredible knowledge, but we're just grateful that they don't get to decide. 1-800-456-2772. Those are the numbers to call. We're hearing about trip, and where are you guys at now in, in what he's going through? Well, Tripp's story actually continued on from that point. Um, he was uh, seen by genetics and was found that there were actually several different body systems that were impacted. So it wasn't just his kidneys for him. He, his first surgery was actually at the age of two months, and it was on his heart. Um, so our whole goal from his birth was to get him to transplant weight, but we had these other issues that had to be dealt with on the way. Um, so he had a kidney transplant in October of last year, um, to which we fought like crazy to try to find a donor. Um, we really thought it would be a lot easier, and it wasn't. Uh, my husband tried first and was found to not be a good match because of his own medical issues and I have a pretty extensive medical history myself and we were not optimistic about me at all but found out that I could do it so I got to give my son a kidney um, October 28th of 2010 mm. so he um, he actually went through several things in between that process right. um, but those were kind of the big highlights uh, there's no way that you and I would have enough time to really rehash his entire story yeah, here yeah. and I'm not sure your your listeners really want to completely live that <laughs> <laughs> so and, and so where are you at where's he at now as far as mm -hmm. since the kidney transplant he's at home um, he we've had some hit or miss things since then. He actually was attacked by an everyday virus that you or I would probably see as like a common cold last mm -hmm. March. Um, and he ended up in the PICU for several days. Um, it attacked body systems in him because of being, because of the suppression of his immune system. It uh, really hit him hard and he was admitted for over a month um, with this. Wow. We found out that he just had some respiratory type things going on at that time and he went home on a CPAP machine. And most recently, we came in and saw another set of doctors who found out 
um, they did a test and he ended up on a ventilator, which was, I think, maybe his fifth time on a ventilator since his birth um, for about eight days because he aspirated in this test. Um, but the test actually was successful and that it answered questions for us. So most recently, we've been battling it out with some additional issues with his respiratory system. And um, the surgeons here have done a great job at kind of hitting the things that we need to focus on at the time and then figuring out what our next step is. Um, I can't say enough about the team here and I can't say enough about the opportunity that we've been given, whether it be medically or through the support systems that they have in place here at the Children's Hospital. That's why we're here. The support systems, the staff, all the things that they offer up for the families. And that's why we need your pledge. 1-800-456-2772. After, after waiting so long to be able to have kids, and some, sometimes uh, people have to wait a while, and it, but, it, but it eventually happens. What, what did you think? You waited so long and then, and then something like this happens. I think every parent has that image in their head of what it's going to be like to be a parent, right? Um, for us, that, it, that was completely blown out of the water. Um, there is not a day goes by that I am not incredibly grateful for these two little guys and the amazing blessings that we've been given with them. And it's very difficult for people to understand, but there isn't a day that goes by that I am not 100% grateful for the opportunity to have these guys for as long as we have them and to know that we'll do everything within our power to keep these guys with us and the rest of it we have to surrender because we can't control it and I don't I think that's the same for every parent it's just that some of us and there's 102 families in here right now that can relate to this for some of us it just smacks us in the head with a frying pan you know whereas other people may get it when they go and get their kid an immunization at the doctor you know, for us, it's just a little bit hit home a little bit harder. Um, but one thing that we do know is that adversity is preparation for greatness. And I do 100% believe that our children are meant to do something great. And that is so many times when people are telling you, you know, this may, this may not be a good result here, or this may be a difficult time for you. Um, you have to hang on to the fact that, that uh, there is a purpose for them. And we don't know what that is yet, but it'll, it'll show itself when it's supposed to. 1-800-456-2772. Adversity is preparation for greatness. Maybe Olympic swimmers? Maybe literary geniuses. They're prepared for either one. That's true. 1-800-456-2772. Call in your pledge right now. For kids like Trip, who've had countless surgeries, transplant, but now at home. Mm -hmm. 1 800 456 2772. Alicia, we're glad that you could come up and share your story with us here this afternoon. And um, it really means a lot to us to, to be, for you to, to be able to do this. Absolutely. If there was anything that I could do for this hospital, um, hands down, all they have to do is make that phone call and I'm there. Um, it, it's just one little bit of way for us to be able to repay what's been given to us because there is absolutely no way that one that I by myself could do that. But what I do know is the listeners that you have right now, together, all of them together, have the opportunity to make an incredible impact. And one person can change so much for so many we are all connected, and to be able to have an opportunity to help other people recognize that is a big dog on deal. We, we think so. That's, that's why we come down here. We yep. think it is a, a big deal, and, and we completely agree. That's why we, we know we have great listeners. We know that they help us out every year. Just a $10 a month pledge or whatever you can afford, one phone call, let's get it started. It has to start with one, 1-800-456-2772. And then another phone rings. And then another phone rings. And then Barb stops looking at me because her phone rings. <laughs> exactly. 1-800-456-2772. Uh, so often we hear about families who have been here who donate. And, uh, and Alicia, you have, a, you have a challenge you want to issue. 
Yes, actually, I do. Um, and I'm not sure if you guys are going to be able to put the songs together for us or not, but there were two songs that I had kind of tossed out um, that we were wondering about um, that have just been incredible inspiration for us. Um, one of them is Mark Schultz, He's My Son, which that is a, a very emotional song for us because it really does uh, hit us hard. And then the other one is a song from Casting Crowns called Courageous. And that to me just really shows um, how each of us can stand together and, and really create an incredible opportunity for others. Mm -hmm. So my challenge out to your viewer or to your listeners, if we were on TV, you'd be viewers. Um, yes, that's very true. It's a good thing you're not on TV. If you're, you would you see these guys, kidding. if you would see these guys, you folks, I'm not sure what you would kidding think. Me. Holy smoke! All right, we're we're very thankful for their time. Let me let me throw that in there too for them. Um, so my challenge to you guys is uh, our challenge is going to be beating the record books hour. So I heard their challenge that they had set for you guys last time, and I know that they beat that challenge, we did. which I believe you're going to be able to do with this one. But they told me I was shooting for the moon, and I said, my son shoots for the moon every day, so why would I not do the same? So uh, we're talking about 100 gifts, regardless of the amount, 100 gifts in one hour. Um, Call it in online, drop it by the fishbowl here, however you got to get it done. Uh, but I believe your viewer, your listeners can do this. And in fact, we only need 99 more, guys, because um, when I was leaving, I was walking out my house today, Trips in-home nurse um, said to me, Alicia, I've got a little something for you that I'd like to have you take and give to them. So um, I'm going to read this quick. It's not very long. It uh, says, Dear Children's Miracle Network, I would like to make this donation to get things kicked off for the Beat in the Record Books Hour. I would also like to extend a challenge to other nurses to get involved with a financial gift for the children. We devote so much of our time and talent to the wellness of children and go further in assisting families in finding confidence and strength during difficult times. I recognize we often give so much. With this giving comes the gift of cries, name calling, yelling, along with smiles, revisits of healthy children, and a sense of purpose in knowing what we do matters. A financial gift to Children's Miracle Network is one way we can offer opportunities for the well-being of the children and families we serve every day. And that was uh, from Jana Foran, um, who is Tripp's nurse that's home with him right now. There you have it, 1-800-456-2772.